Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. But today's video is actually going to be the first video in my new video series all about candle making for beginners. So the whole purpose of making this series is really just to break everything down step by step and focus on one topic at a time for anybody that is looking to get into candle making and um, doesn't wanna be overwhelmed by you know all this information all at once. So my goal with this is to really break everything down, make it easy to understand and make you feel so much more confident as you get into your candle making hobby or if you're getting into candle making for business. So this series is really for anybody and everybody that is just interested in candle making. And the first video in this series, today's video, we're just gonna be going over some candle making basics. So if you've never made a candle before and you're interested in getting started, this would be the video to watch first, just to hear some basic information about what candle making is, and then some specific information and some facts and knowledge that you need to know as you get into the actual candle making process. So let's first talk about what candle making is. Now there are various forms of candle making, but in this series and what I am most comfortable talking about because that's all I really have experience with is container candles. So container candles are candles that are basically contained within a jar or a vessel. So it's not like a pillar candle to where it's like, you know, standing on its own and it's not within something. I uh, actually am not gonna be talking about pillar candles in this series. I'm only going to be talking about container candles. So container candles making them on a very basic level is you are taking candle wax that is container candles candle wax, melting it down, adding in a fragrance to that, and then mixing those together, pouring it into your container to make a candle. That is candle making in the absolute basic form. Candle making is essentially a scientific experiment, and I don't want that to scare you if you're like, okay, well, I'm not a science person, so I can't make candles. I'm not a science person either, and uh, I have been making candles for years now, so please don't think that you have to be a scientist in order to make candles. But in the grand scheme of things, candle making is a science because you are putting together these different particles and pieces together and see how they function and then try to create a good performing candle. A candle that is not going to, you know, explode the jar that it's in, or a candle that's going to just burn a little bit through and then tunnel all the way down the candle. If you've purchased candles before in the past, you've probably seen all these different weird things that have happened, maybe only burning one side of the candle, you got black soot on the side of the candle, it's burning down, or maybe the flames have gotten really big. I mean, there's all those really terrible videos that I've seen before on TikTok of people's candles just catching on fire for various reasons. So obviously there is an element to candle making that uh, requires you to go through a testing process so a testing process is basically when you have put all of your ingredients together, so your wax, your wick, your fragrance, the container that it's in, and you are going through a testing process, which is basically lighting it as if you had purchased the candle from the store, and you're going through that testing process and seeing how that candle is actually going to perform. So when we are making candles, the two main things that we are looking for when we make a candle is we wanna make sure that the candle is safe through the testing process and that's how we learn if a candle is safe. And we also want a good performing candle. We want a candle that is going to fill up a room and smell really good when lit because that's the purpose of a candle to be honest. Now this next bit of information could vary based on if you are somebody who is wanting to get into candle making as a hobby or somebody who is looking into maybe turning it into a business later on down the line. But I do highly recommend that you purchase materials that are from candle suppliers. So versus a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that, the quality of ingredients that you're gonna be getting from those places is not going to um, yield as nice of a candle as the products that you can get from actual candle suppliers. Now, when I first got started with candle making, I used, I think it was Hobby Lobby wax or 
maybe it was from Michael's, I can't remember. And I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, it wasn't something that I was looking to turn into a business right away. I was just having fun with candle making. So if you're just wanting to get into it just to kind of, you know, make a few candles and you're just interested in the process of it, then I don't see a reason why you wouldn't be able to just play around with that. But if you're looking to actually create a professional quality candle, I would recommend to spend a little bit more money and um, invest into the quality that you can get from actual candle supplies. Suppliers. So everything with candle making is actually by weight. So you're gonna need a scale in order to make candles and you're not gonna be focused on the volume of anything. This can be a little bit confusing because when you're working with fragrance and also when you melt down the wax, everything is in liquid, but you still want to weigh everything in either grams or ounces to get an accurate ratio between the wax and the fragrance oil. The reason why is because we wanna make sure that we are being as accurate as possible through different types of fragrances and different kinds of fragrance oils will have a different density. So certain fragrances that are heavier, maybe they have a lot of vanilla in it. Um, the, sometimes the oils can be a little bit darker. They don't take up as much volume inside of the bottle as a lighter, less dense fragrance oil is. And all different fragrances have a different density and you'll be able to see that with the bottles that you purchase. So when you're purchasing fragrance oil from different suppliers, it's by weight and not by volume. So if you're looking at two different oils and you're like, it looks like they shorted me on this one, it's not that at all, it's just by weight. So different fragrances have a different density to them. So that's why throughout the candle making process, we want to make sure that we are focusing on scales and using everything by weight. And I also want to throw in there that if you are weighing out your wax in either a liquid or a solid state, it's going to weigh the same. So whether or not you are weighing out a solid block of wax or a liquid amount of wax on a pouring pitcher, it's going to weigh the exact same. And then now what I wanna do is define some common candle making terms that you may hear on YouTube video comments, YouTube videos, or even Facebook groups if you're just kind of getting into the world of candle making and you're like, I have no idea what this means. So I'm gonna go over it in a very basic way. And again, I will touch more on this in other videos where I can go more in depth when I am talking more about that specific topic. So I'm going to go into more depth about waxes and wicks and fragrance oils and all of that. So let's go over the first term, uh, which is used a lot in candle making, which is wick up and wick down. So wicking up or wicking down is basically going over the size of the wick that you're working with. So let's say you're test burning a candle. Handle, you have a size wick that you're working with and it's tunneling and you would look at that and be like okay well I need to wick up I need to use a larger wick in order to see if that works better for the container now the size of the wick is actually not based on the length of the wick it's based on the thickness of the wick. So smaller wicks are going to be thinner and bigger wicks are going to be thicker. That's really where the, the size difference is when it comes to wicks. So wicking up is choosing a bigger wick or a thicker wick, and then wicking down is choosing a smaller wick or a thinner wick. You may also hear the term melt pool being used, and all that is is just the melted portion of wax in a candle. So no matter how long a candle's been burning for, um, there's going to be a melt pool, whether that it's a teeny tiny a bit um, around the wick, if it's only been burning for a few minutes, or if it's bur been bur burning for four or five hours, it's going to have a much larger melt pool. And it's basically just whatever portion of the candle is melted, that's the melt pool. There's also the acronyms that are used HT and CT, and they stand for hot throw and cold throw. And the difference between these two is how powerful or how potent and strong your candle smells when it's lit and when it's just cold out of the candle. So I have a candle right next to me. This would be considered 
cold throw. So how strong is the candle? Is it really hard to smell the fragrance? That would be a weaker cold throw. If you're like, oh man, that's like really hits me in the nose, then it has a stronger cold throw. Same thing when you light a candle. You can determine if it has a stronger hot throw based on if you have to hover over the candle and you're like, okay, I kind of smell it has a weaker hot throw versus, I mean, you're walking down the hallway to the bathroom to check on it and you can smell it all throughout, that has a stronger hot throw. And then the last one you may see a lot is the acronym FO, and that stands for fragrance oil. You may also see FO with a percentage sign, and that stands for fragrance oil percentage. And again, I will go over more in depth on fragrance oil percentage and everything, but that's basically just how much of the candle is fragrance oil. So what is the ratio between fragrance oil to wax inside of this candle? That would be the fragrance oil percentage, but FO just stands for fragrance oil. So that concludes today's video talking all about some basic information that you should know when you're getting into candle making for the first time. There is so much more information that I can share with you, but I can go more in depth when we're talking about certain topics. So please make sure that you stay tuned for the second video in this series where I talk all about choosing your wax and different waxes and all the information that you need to know about container wax. But with that, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.